Amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? Say amen. amen. Please stand for the reading of the word. Take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians. We are in chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Everybody say, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Well, that was really weak. I want you to say it again. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on a breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all, everybody say all, all, the fiery darts of the wicked one. Father, we thank you and praise you. God, would you anoint your word. Lord, in the next few moments, God, may we understand what it is that you're trying to say to us. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Before you're seated, turn around and tell somebody they look good. <laughs> Last week, we talked about seven stumbling blocks that we face when we're trying to reach people. We're in a study on reaching the lost. Last week, we began a two-part message. Actually, it's a three-part message on um, dealing with people. How many know people are hard to deal with? Amen. Turn to somebody and say, you are hard to deal with. <laughs> I said, that's good, that's good, that's good. Isn't it amazing that the husbands and wives are the ones that really get into the discussion of it? No. But people are hard to deal with. And church, here's the thing. And, and I told you about the pastor that I, that I talked to one time said, I love ministry, I just can't stand people. And we understand that people are ministry. Amen. Amen. If you don't love people, don't be in the ministry. Because we deal with people. We deal with the lost who are out in the world, who are struggling and they're trying to find their way. And we as Christians are the ones to bring it to them. We also deal with people in the church who are just as hard to deal with. I was talking to somebody one time and I was kind of witnessing to them a little bit. And they said, you know, I don't go to church. I used to go to church many years ago and I don't go anymore. And I said, how come? They said, well, the church is just full of hypocrites. Raise your hand if you've heard that before. Church is full of hypocrites. And here's what I said. I said, well, you're absolutely right. He said, really? I said, absolutely right. But I said, here's the thing. There's plenty of hypocrites out here too. See, there's hypocrites everywhere. Hypocrites are people who say one thing and do another. Raise your hand if you've ever said one thing and then done another. Raise your hand. See? Hypocrites. Every one of you. So, how do we deal with them? Well, last week we talked about seven stumbling blocks. I call them negatives. And this week, I want to begin. We're going to go probably halfway through and then we'll finish it up next week. But I want to focus on seven positive truths. I want to get you to focus on the good things that God has. How many know God has good things for us? Amen. I want us to see that we are in, in, in need of God who works in us. Amen. And every day we deal with people. And every day we deal with circumstances. And so many times we struggle because we don't understand what the nature of the battle is. And so here we are in Ephesians chapter 6. And Paul said... We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age. I want to say, number one, write this down. We are in a war. We are in a war. Say it with me. We are in a war. War is messy. When we talk about being in war, we need to understand war is ugly and it's messy and we need to prepare. We need to be ready. When we talk about our nation, I'm going to tell you, I just, I've noticed this. This is just something I've seen. When our nation is militarily strong, it seems that we're a little bit stronger. 
When it is not, it seems like we have more problems. And I say that because we are in a complex world. We are no longer an entity unto ourselves. The United States of America is not unto itself. We are part of the world. And when we understand that militarily we need to be strong, I believe in, in compassion, I believe in love, but I believe it in strength. Amen. 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 When we have, for instance, and I'll just use Brentwood, when we have a police force that is compassionate yet thorough and strong, how many know we're not going to have as much problem with crime? In the areas in our cities and in our nation where uh, there is a not that kind of presence, how many know we are in for anarchy? Mm -hmm. When you take away the military might, then you're dealing with people who will decide for themselves what is right and wrong. Right. How many know, listen to me, we are a nation of laws. And laws help us govern. Can I just tell you, church, that it is the same way with God? God has given us His Word. His Word is law. When God laid the law down, when He laid His Word down, how many know? He said, look, if you'll abide in that, abide in my, what? Word. And let my Word abide in you. How many know when we do that, we're obeying God and we have a, a better life? Amen? Now, Pastor, why are you saying all this? I'm saying this because you need to understand that we're in a war. We are in a battle every day. And listen, we have one enemy. The enemy is Satan. Amen. 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 One enemy, but he has manifested himself in many ways. Notice what Paul says. Paul said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. He's saying, yes, there is one enemy, but he is manifest in many different ways. Mm -hmm. During World War II, I love to study um, our past. I love history. I've always been a history buff. And I studied World War II. And when we went to war, we went to war with mainly three nations. We went, actually it wasn't the nation, it was the dictators of the nations. We went with Adolf Hitler from Germany, uh, Mussolini from uh, Italy, and then uh, the emperor of Japan. Okay? So, and three, the three of them together were called the Axis of Evil. And we dealt with that, not just us, but a, a, an amalgamation of nations. We could say that we were fighting Hitler. Or we could say we were fighting Mussolini, or we could say we were fighting uh, uh, Tokyo, Tojo. Okay? So we could say that we were fighting these enemies, but listen to me. It was more, more concentrated than that. If you were in the European theater, you weren't fighting Adolf Hitler, you were fighting Rommel. Rommel was one of the generals of Adolf Hitler. George Patton would say that as he was a general in, in the European theater, um, he didn't care about he didn't care about Adolf Hitler because that's not who he was fighting. He was fighting against General Rommel. General Rommel was a brilliant tactician. He was amazing, and his he wrote books on tank warfare. So George Patton would later on say that that was his enemy. That's who he had to outsmart. Church, listen to me. We don't just fight the enemy. We don't just fight Satan. There are principalities, powers. There are, there are things that are above us and beyond us that we don't really fully understand. But that's who we're dealing with. Amen. And we have to understand that in that, we need to know who the enemy is and where it's coming from. I was talking with somebody one time and they said, Pastor, I get that the Bible says that, that Satan is my enemy, but that guy right there, you have no idea what he said to me and what he did to me. So see, I'm not fighting Satan, I'm fighting Satan and Mike. <laughs> Except that I'm not. I'm never fighting Mike. Believe me, I'm never fighting Mike. <laughs> Mike, Mike would wipe the floor with me. So Mike, I will never fight with you. 
But do you understand that Mike is never my enemy? Never. Doesn't matter what he said, doesn't matter what he does to me, doesn't, none of that matters. He is never my enemy. Can I just tell you that if you're in a firefight and you don't know where the bullets are coming from, how many know you're dead? Yeah. Right? If you, are, if you are in a war and somebody is shooting at you and you have no idea where it's coming from, how many know there's no way that you can protect yourself? Right. Mike is never my enemy. Yeah, but Pastor, what about the things he says about you and the things that he does to you? Again, Mike's not my enemy. Now listen, Mike might allow himself sometime. Boy, I'm picking on you, bro. <laughs> Mike might allow himself to be used. Say, so, well, Pastor, I thought Mike was a good guy. I thought he was a Christian. He is. Mike's a great guy and loves the Lord. And you know what? Loves me. But he may allow himself to be used. I put it this way. We can become parrots, parrots if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. How many have ever heard a parrot talk? Ever heard a parrot talk? Mm -hmm. They're amazing. They have a voice box that can allow them to mimic human speech. I was walking, in fact, the other day I was walking past uh, uh, an aviary and and I heard a parrot say some sentences, not a word, but like some sentences. And I did some research and I found out that parrots have no concept of rational thinking. How many know the bird does not know what it's saying? It's just parroting, it's just regurgitating what it's heard. <clears throat> It can't think, it can't put a sense together, it can't understand what it's saying or understand what you're saying, but it can just repeat it. Christian, listen to me. That happens all the time in our world. People hear something and then they repeat it. The problem with that is that we're like the bird. We're not thinking. We're not using God's wisdom. We're not listening to the word. See, I, I scared Mike so bad he laughed. <laughs> there was a scripture in Mark chapter 8, 33, and then also in Matthew chapter 16, verse 34, 38. And Jesus is having a conversation with the disciples. And he's telling them, Eddie, what's going to happen? He, he's, he says, look, I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be brought before the, the governor. I'm going to be brought before him and, and I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Now, Peter hears that. Now, understand, Peter's the one that is the spiritual one. He's the one that loves God. Matter of fact, Peter's the one that when Jesus said, who did men say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the living Son of God. And Jesus said, Peter, you're right. Man has not told you that. God told you that. Peter, right? That's me. God talks to me. Raise your hand if God talks to you. Come on, be honest. Yeah, yeah. You guys are all spiritual. You're amazing. So, Jesus tells the disciples, and all of a sudden, Jesus points his finger at Peter and says, Get thee behind me, Satan, for you have nothing in me. Who did he say that to? Who was he pointing his finger at? Peter. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> there are times, many times in your life, when God is not talking through you, Satan is talking through you. Now, we don't ever want to admit that. Because we're all spiritual. Raise your hand if you're a spiritual person. See, Pastor, Satan doesn't talk through me. Oh, yes, he does. Let me tell you a true story. We were in a board meeting. It was many years ago. And in the middle of the board meeting, it got a little heated. And there was a, an argument between two of the board members. One of the board members started uh, kind of just raking the other board member and a few other people over the coals. And just kind of being, and, and as he talked, he got more upset and more upset. All of a sudden, 
one of my board members looked at him, pointed his finger, and said, I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. I rebuke that spirit. All of a sudden, that other board member rocked back, stood up, and walked out the door. So, I mean, we were all blown away. Because the, the, the person who was saying all this stuff normally is a very quiet, very, you know, very loving person. So after the meeting, I looked at the board and I said, we can't let this go. We've got to deal with this. And now. So one of the other board members came with me and we went over to that board member's house, knocked on the door. And he opened the door, Pastor Jason, and as he did, I looked at him and I said, brother, we love you. What's going on? And all of a sudden, he began to cry, and he reached out, and he grabbed us, and he hugged us. And for the next 35, 40 minutes, we just sat there with him, and we prayed with him, and talked to him. And then we left, and it was over. Now you say, well, that, that guy wasn't a Christian. Sure he was. Well, he must have been very immature. Not at all. See, church, we need to understand who's talking. And we need to decide who we're listening to. There is a voice that will speak to you, and it's the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit that's inside of you. How many are saved? How many love the Lord? Raise your hand. When God talks to you, you need to know that that's His voice. Amen. However, you also need to know when other voices are talking to you and who they are. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it this way. He said, my sheep know my voice. Amen. If you are of Christ, when He speaks to you, you'll know. Amen? Amen? But listen, you just as much need to know when the enemy talks, who's talking? So, one day I was just praying about this, and I thought, as I was doing this study, I said, Lord, you know, how can I explain this? And he said, well, just say it this way. Here's the voice of God. He will always talk to you, healing, restoration, in peace. That's the voice of the Lord. When, when you're having a hard time, um, um, Art, when you're having a hard time, and you're just kind of minding your own business, and a voice comes to you and says, in a, in, let's say in a, in a situation where there's a, there's a disagreement, when the voice says to you, Art, you need to be at peace. You need to restore the situation. How many know that's the Lord? And if Art listens to that and obeys it, how many know there's peace? Amen. However, he will never speak to you division or divisiveness and anger. God doesn't talk like that. Amen. Amen. Right. Know his voice. My sheep know my voice. Know who's talking to you. If somebody is talking to you and saying, that Eddie guy over here, what a jerk. Guess what? That's not God. That's not God. I'm going to read scripture to you and I want you to follow it with me and I'm going to explain it to you because I think it will help you. We're talking about the second thing, the second point I want to make, which, was don't, which is don't allow the war to bring bitterness and cause you to lose compassion. So write that down. Don't allow the war to bring bitterness and cause you to lose compassion. Hebrews 12, 15, look carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up cause to cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. I want to explain that because that is not an obvious scripture. He says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Let me just tell you that he is not specifically talking about the grace of God in your life. He's talking about you giving grace to others. How many know that when God sheds His grace on us, we are to then give grace to others? Amen. I don't even have time to go through all the Scripture. The, the Scripture that talks about a board in your eye and, and seeing a speck in your brother's eye, take the board out first so that you can see to take the speck out. Judge not, lest you be judged. For where, where thou, thou judge, thou will also be judged. How many know that when we start judging people, God says, I'm going to start judging you. Amen. So, we're talking about grace and God's grace and us giving grace. Amen. God saved me 
And I was a great sinner. Therefore, I'm going to give grace to my brother. Amen. So no, okay, so now read the scripture with me. Let's read it again. Looking carefully, everybody say carefully. Carefully. Lest anyone fall short of God's grace. Amen. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Let's see. Got to pick on Joey. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Jeff was talking to Joey the other day, and Joey was short with Jeff. In fact, he was kind of rude. So Jeff goes to Pastor Jason and says, what is with Joey? What a jerk. I mean, I was just talking to him, and all of a sudden, he just got, he just. The best thing that Pastor Jason, the best advice he could give Jeff, Jeff is this. Jeff, you need to go to Joey. And find out what's going on because there may be something deeper there that you don't know about. So Jeff goes to Joey. In fact, Jeff, come here. Joey, come here. <laughs> so Jeff goes to Joey. Now look at each other. Don't look out there. And he said, Bud, I noticed you were kind of short the other day. And I just want you to know, hey, no problem, but are you okay? I mean, are you all right? I mean, you know, I just, is there something, I mean, it, it, did I, have I done something to you? Have I offended you? Please let me know, because I'm sorry if I did. Joey says to Jeff, oh, no, man, I, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have been short with you, but bro, he said, I'm going through a hard time I'm really struggling. And then Joey starts sharing with Jeff what he's going through. Jeff then has a choice. He can say, oh, okay, all right, we're going to walk away. Or Jeff can say to Joey, look, bro, I'm here for you. I want you to know that I love you, and I'm praying for you. And if there's anything I can ever do, any way I can help you, please let me do it. How many know at that moment, God was talking, and Jeff was listening? So is Joey. Church, do you understand that these two are not the problem? They will not fight each other and ever win. They have to know who is speaking. And they have to understand that God gives us the grace to give to each other. Jeff gave Joey grace. Joey received not only God's grace, but he received Jeff's grace. And God through that healed. No, no, you guys can't hug now. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, boys. Church, do you understand how important it is that we know who's talking? Amen. The third thing that we see and is important is remember God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. Brian, God has a plan for your life. It is not the same plan as the person next to you. It may not be in the same way. You guys may not uh, walk the same path. But how many know God's got a plan for every one of us? We, I have pastor friends who pastor churches that are uh, five and 10,000 people. I have a pastor right now, a good friend of mine, that I talk to on the phone, that I will we'll text each other and encourage each other. He, had, he pastors a church of 10,000. Church, do you understand that God puts us on different paths, but we're all family. Mm -hmm. And we all help each other. And we all encourage each other. The path that Joey's on is different than the path that Jeff's on. The path that Pastor Jason is on is different than the path that Eddie is on right now. We are in a battle, but we are together. We are understanding that God has a purpose for my life. And He has a purpose for every one of us. And He has a plan. His plan may not include uh, certain things, but it may include other things. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. Everybody say ordered. Order. By the Lord. And he delights in his way. Though, though he fall, he will not utterly be cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Amen. I have been young, 
David said, and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. I was young, boy I was, and now I'm old, and, I, <laughs> and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. I know a lot of you, I know most of you, and I have seen you in all kinds of situations. And what is amazing to me is I've seen so many times where you were in need and God met you. You were struggling financially and God came in. You were struggling spiritually and God came in. He used somebody in this room to minister to you. He used somebody else to come to you and minister life to you because God has a plan for us. And He wants us to know that. Can I just tell you, God orders, He doesn't hope. Let me just say that again. God doesn't hope. We hope. God doesn't hope. He orders. Amen. When we walked out of the doctor's office, when we got the diagnosis for Pastor Cindy, the first thing, the very first thing, other than the fear, and I will be honest with you, fear gripped me. But the next thing that came is a voice. And the voice said, I was not taken by surprise. Immediately, I looked at Cindy and I said, God was not surprised by this. I mean, God wasn't up on his throne going, oh my goodness, I wasn't watching it. And look what happened to Cindy. God orders. The steps of a righteous man are ordered to God. Amen. Not always like it. It's not always fun. But how many know God's in charge? Amen. The doctors are not in charge. Cancer is not in charge. The devil's not in charge. Amen. None of those people are in charge. None of those entities are in charge. God is. And he says, look, I've ordered your steps. And God is the only one that can order. Nobody else can order. Satan can't order. Amen. Jimmy, Satan can't order for you. Only God can order. <laughs> Satan can try to buffet you. He can try to get you to struggle. He can try to get your eyes off God. But only God can order your steps. Amen. Church, why is that important? It's important because you gotta understand God has a plan. God doesn't wring his hands and says, gee, I hope Dennis makes it here. Gee, I just, I hope Dennis. I just, I hope he makes it. See, that's what we say. Amen? Because we need hope. Faith, love, and hope. We need hope. God doesn't need hope. God is hope. God orders. And he orders our steps. And he tells us what we need when we need it. Nothing surprised God about what has transpired in your life. And you need to understand that. So number one, we're in a war. And it's ugly and messy. Number two, don't let the war make you bitter and have you lose your compassion. And number three, understand God has a plan for your life. Amen. Paul the Apostle was going through a lot. In Acts 23, 11, it says the night that the Lord appeared, that night the Lord appeared to Paul and said, be encouraged, Paul. Just as you have been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must go preach the good news to Rome. Paul said, okay. God, look, I tried that and they threw me out of the city and they stoned me to death. Oh. God said, no problem, Paul. I'll just raise you from the dead. Did you know that that happened to Paul? He was in a city and he was witnessing for the Lord and they got so angry and so enraged they took him outside of the city and they stoned him. And he laid there dead. Walked back in the city and kept preaching. Amen. That's the God we serve. Amen. If God wants Paul to go to Rome, how many know Paul's going to Rome? If God wants you to go through the valley, how many know you're going to go through the valley, but He's going to go with you? Amen. He's going to take you to the mountaintop. Amen. But 
you're going to have to go through the valley first. And can I just tell you, when God's with you, the valley doesn't matter. When God is with you, the valley doesn't matter. So Paul went to Rome. Many years ago, I had a pastor in my church that had a really weak heart. He had had a massive heart attack and he only had about 25% of his heart. And he had gone on for a number of years after that. And when I say a number, I mean like 10 or 10, 20 years. And the doctor said, I don't even know what's keeping you alive. I mean like chewing gum, bailing wire, and duct tape. <laughs> He had so many medications he had to take, and he if, he if he laid down too long, he had to get up because his blood pressure would go crazy. And he and one day I was over at his house, and he was telling me kind of what happened to him, when it happened to him, and then how long it's been. And I looked at him and I said, "How can you do that? How can you go? How can you live like that? I mean, literally, you don't know if you're going to wake up the next morning." And he looked at me and he had a smile on his face. He said, Dennis, I got news for you. God is the one who delivers my steps. If he wants me alive for another 20 years, guess what? I'm going to be alive for another 20 years and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Amen. However, if he wants to take me tomorrow, how many know? He said, I'm going home and there's nothing the doctors can do about it. Amen. He said, God will take me home when he's ready. Not a moment before. Amen. You know what? We left that area. And I think he went on for about another five years. And then one day, God took him home. Church, I need you to understand. There's a victory that God has called us to win. Amen. But we can only do that when we understand who the battle is. We can only do that when we understand who the enemy is. What I find in churches, and I see it all the time, is people begin to fight people. They argue with people. They fight with each other. They have disagreements with each other. They, Paul said it this way. He says, you fight and you have war with each other. And he said, you bite and devour each other. In fact, he said, you commit murder in your heart. Did you know that there are people oftentimes in the church that commit murder? Oh, they don't take a gun, shoot somebody, or a knife and stab somebody, but they murder their character. Or they'll murder them in their mind. Believe me, I've heard people say, I want to kill that guy! You say, well, pastor, they don't mean it. Yeah, yes, they do. <laughs> Church, listen to me. I believe God is saying today, we need a church that is ready to deal with people in the church and outside the church. But if you can't love your brother and sister who you sit next to, how in the world can you love somebody out there? Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you and praise you. Lord, we love you. Father, these are the things that we deal with. We first must understand, God, that we're in war. We must know who the enemy is how he speaks and when father to stand up and fight lord i'm asking jesus that you work on us father don't let bitterness come into us don't let it come into our heart church i want to say it again i want you to hear we battle not against flesh and blood we fight not but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. Amen? Without looking around, raise your hand if you know when Jesus talks to you. You hear his voice come on.
guard your heart. Guard your heart. And love one another. And listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit when He speaks to you. And obey Him when He tells you to do something. The greatest enemy that we face today is not even Satan. The greatest enemy we face today in the church is apathy. When we stand up and we fight, there is no army on earth that can stop us. There is no enemy that can hold us. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, church, come on, stand up. I watched a couple of football games yesterday. My grandson played in one with little bitty guys, and then I watched the next age. When when the team, when they announced the team, they were all in the end zone. They were all huddled up and they were getting getting excited. They had a flag. There was smoke coming out of the flag. I don't even know how they did that, but it was cool. And they had a banner, and they ran through the banner, and they were running together. And they came to the sideline, and they were, man, it was awesome. And, and Coach was in the front waving the flag. I mean, the, these guys felt like they could go through a brick wall. And they did. 42 to nothing. Sorry? 48? It was awesome. And, and so I was talking to my grandson afterwards. He goes, Pop, that's my music. I got my music. I, I get all pumped. It's my pump up music. Fighting music. Church, we need fighting music. We heard some today. Amen. We heard it today. Honey, what was that first song that you guys played? Strength will rise when we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise. Man, I want to do something different. We started at the altar. I want to finish at the altar. Come on. Come on out. We're not coming to pray. How do you know we've done that? You're not coming up here because there's a problem. Strength will rise when we wait upon the Lord. Amen. Here's what I want to do. I want to sing that song. Come on. I want to get fired up. I wish I had a flag. I wish I could have smoke coming out of it. It was awesome. Come on, church. Let's stand up. Let's clap. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's be excited. Woo! Come on. Where's it now? Straight to the right. We need to come to the right. Come on. Let's do it. Come on.
And Father, we are praying victory over cancer. God, we're praying victory over heart disease. God, we're praying victory over sin in Jesus' name. God, I pray right now, Father, a blessing. Lord, as we leave this place, God, may we have victory. Lord, I pray no worry. Father, no torment. No fear. God, no fear. Father, we are strong. We are victorious. Yeah, I have raised you up. I have lifted you up, saith the Lord. I have strengthened you, my people. I have given you my spirit. Yeah, I will cause you to be victorious. I will cause you, saith the Lord, to run through the enemy. In Jesus' name. Church, listen. Yes. Doesn't mean you will not have difficulties. It doesn't mean that you won't face challenges. It doesn't mean that the enemy is not going to try to knock you off. You need to understand that you are victorious. God is not going to necessarily take you out of the storm. He's going to bring you through the storm. I said he's going to bring you through the storm. Don't look at me that way. You are not pumped up. You are filled up. I said this in the first service and I didn't say it, but I'm going to say it now. God wants us to walk in the Spirit. When He gives us tongues, interpretation, when He gives us a word of knowledge, you need to receive it. God is telling us, and we are in a wicked world, and as Pastor Jay said, it's not going to get better. It's going to only get worse. But greater is He is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. So you take authority over disease. You take authority over sin. You take authority over bitterness. Because it will destroy you if you don't. Amen? Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Lord, we praise you. Father, we thank you. And Lord, we walk in victory today. Lord, we walk in victory today. Everybody shout. Hey. Yeah. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.